Hello friends, welcome to PCBA. Uh, today we learn about the three phase diagram, a very important diagram as far as geotechnical engineering is concerned. Uh, as all the other derivations in geotechnical engineering are most of the derivations are uh, dependent upon the equations that we deduce from the three phase diagram. So this will be a three part series, video lecture series, in which the first part would be the basics of the three phase diagram. The second part would be the relationship between three phase diagram and the void ratio. And the third part would be the relationship between three phase diagram and the porosity. Okay. So let's start with it. As you can see on the screen, we have this beautiful beach, right? Just imagine that you pick up a sand from here, okay, a moist sand. So what would be that sand made up of? I'll just pack that sand into this box, okay? And I'm microscopically I am just looking at the sand. So all these are the sa sand particles, right? Along with the sand particles, you also have the water particles which are in blue here. So, okay, so these are the solids which are the sand particles. This is the water particles and along with water particles, there is some voids in between which is filled with air, right? So this is air. So any soil can be classified into these three components, right? Solid, water and air. So I just now uh, dif uh, differentiate all these three uh, elements that is solid, water and air into different diagrams right so all the solids i have jam packed into this small solid all the water molecules i'll be keeping it above the solids and all the air voids that are present in this in this mass of soil i'll be putting it above water okay so i can represent this soil what we had uh, taken from the beach into this diagram where i've just differentiated all the individual elements that is solid here water here and air here this is called as three phase diagram okay this is the entire soil that we had taken from the beach right the gaps between two solids are called as voids okay so the gaps between two solids are filled with air and they are filled with water as well right as you can see here the gaps between any two solids are filled with air as well as water so air plus water both of them form the voids okay this is the entire soil and air plus water form the voids of in the soil in this in this mass of particular soil okay so this is three phase diagram let's see one more example this is desert okay now consider that you take the sand from the desert will it have water will it have water no it won't have water right it will not have water soil would be only consisting of solids and air so the diagram now converts into a two phase diagram where the water is absent because this is a desert sand and there is no water no sign of water into desert right consider this particular example a water puddle right a water puddle or a soil that is fully uh, saturated with water you can see this uh, in muds or whenever it rains etc so tell me that if a soil is fully saturated with water will there be any air there won't be any air because it is fully saturated with water right so this diagram will again con get converted into two phase diagram consisting of a solid particle solid mass and water mass right so there won't be air in this so for particular examples your three phase diagrams get converted into two phase diagrams as well now let's check the volumetric relations what the volumetric relations are see the volume of solid in a particular soil was vs and name it as vs volume of water would be vw and volume of air would be va right and the total volume would be v air plus water as i already told you they form the voids so the volume of voids would be volume of air plus volume of water both of them form the volume of voids which i have named as vv and the total volume is v let's see the mass the mass of solids are ms mass of water is mw and mass of air is zero because air has negligible mass right and uh, very 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 less mass so it can be neglected right but the volume cannot be neglected because air does take a sufficient amount of space in your sand and that is why the volume cannot be neglected but the mass can be neglected and the total mass of the soil would be ms plus mw plus ma but ma is zero so the total mass would be ms plus mw right now let's see few definitions which are very important as far as geotech is concerned void ratio 
void ratio is defined as the ratio of volume of voids to volume of solids so volume of voids to volume of solids which is equal to e is equal to vw plus va that is volume of voids upon volume of solids right very simple the void ratio can have a value greater than unity as it is just expression of volume of voids in relation to volume of solids and in such case it would mean that the solid particles are widely spaced what does that mean is that say a soil is packed in this box and these are the solid particles here very few solid particles in the soil So now in this case, as you can see, there are very few solid particles and most of the soil is covered with voids, right? These are all voids that is in between the solid particles are all, all voids. So the volume of voids for this particular soil would be greater than the volume of solids and thus your void ratio will be greater than one. Okay. So void ratio can have a value greater than one as well, right? Porosity. Porosity is defined as ratio of volume of voids to the total volume, right? So the volume of voids to the total volume, VV upon V, that is denoted by N. Okay, now I'll ask you a question. Just think for a moment uh, and um, get the answer that can the porosity be greater than one? Can porosity be greater than one? Well. So porosity cannot be greater than 1 because volume of voids is the part of your total volume and volume of voids can never exceed your total volume, right? So porosity can never exceed unity as it would mean that there is no soil itself. Okay, if, if the void ratios are greater than your total volume, that means there is no solids part in that. Okay, so the more the value of n, the greater is the void ratio as your porosity is directly dependent on your volume of voids so the greater the value of n more are your volume of voids and more the volume of voids greater is the void ratio right fine now 1 by n is the opposite, uh, opposite of this right v upon vv so total v is your vs plus vv right we will we, we are deriving this relation between the porosity and your void ratio okay so this will become 1 plus volume of solids upon volume of voids which is equal to 1 plus 1 upon e right because vol volume of uh, void void ratio is given as volume of voids upon volume of solids so i've just taken this volume of solids solids below that becomes 1 plus 1 by E and when we just uh, simplify this equation I'll get 1 by N is equal to 1 plus E upon E right so I can now deduce this equation that N is equal to E upon 1 plus E okay this is your equation for porosity percentage of air voids percentage of air voids is defined as the ratio of volume of air to the total volume so this is your volume of air to the total volume right so it is va by v very simple as that the percentage of air voids is zero for a fully saturated soil as we saw previously in the example of water puddle right that the whole soil was filled with water so there was no air and since there is no air there can be no volume of air so the percentage of air voids would be zero saturation s saturation is defined as the ratio of volume of water to the volume of voids that is vw upon vv right so s is vw upon vv saturation is unity that is s is equal to one for fully saturated soils and saturation is zero that is s equal to zero for dry soils since in dry soil the water would be absent right so the saturation would be zero since vw would be zero and since for fully saturated soil the water will be completely that is the volume of voids would be equal to volume of water 
and thus the saturation would be 1 right okay air content air content is defined as the ratio of volume of air to the volume of voids volume of air to the volume of voids earlier we also had an equation for percentage of air voids that was volume of air upon total volume the air content is volume of air upon volume of voids that is it shows the amount of air content in for the total volume of voids how much is the volume of air content as the saturation showed that how much was the volume of water content in your total voids air content shows that how much is the air volume in your total voids right the air content would be unity for dry soils because in dry soils the water is absent and the total volume of voids would be volume of air and air content would be zero for fully saturated soils as the air would be absent completely water content water content is defined as the ratio of mass of water to the mass of solids that is mw upon ms now this is the mass relation not volume relation okay so water content is defined as mass of water upon mass of solids mw by ms bulk mass density rho the bulk mass density rho is defined as the total mass per unit total volume total mass is this m per unit total volume is total v so it is given as ms plus mw plus ma upon vs plus vw plus va m is zero right where ms is the mass of solids and where uh, it is ms is given as rho s into vs where rho s is the solid density the density of these solid particles and rho s is given as g into rho w where g is the specific gravity of solids i hope you know this relation that g is given as rho s by rho w right the specific gravity of any material is given as the density of that material to the density of water thus i have substituted the rho s as g into rho w which is a specific gravity of solids and now i can substitute this rho s here so i get ms as rho w into uh, g rho w into vs and mw is obviously rho w into vw this also comes from the relation of your mass and uh, mass density volume relation that is rho is equal to mass upon volume right so if i want mass of anything i have to multiply the density of that particular material into the volume of that particular material so the mass of water is density of water into the volume of water dry mass density dry mass density as it says that the mass has to be dry that is there has to be no water so dry mass density is defined as the uh, mass of solids per unit total volume because it is ma plus ms since ma is zero only ms remains right and the total volume is va plus vs so ms upon v saturated mass density as the name suggests that the whole soil has to be saturated there is there has to be no air content in this thus the saturated mass density is defined as a total saturated mass per total unit volume so it is ms plus mw upon vs plus vw ms plus mw i'll say that this is saturated mass m sat upon the total volume v submerged mass density submerged mass density is defined as the total submerged mass per unit total volume now just tell me that whenever you go into a swimming pool do you feel weightless or do you gain more weight i hope the answer would be weightless you would be you would be feeling weightless right whenever you go into the swimming pool why do you feel not exactly weightless but you might you must be feeling that your weight has been reduced comparatively right so why do you feel like that it's because the water gives an upthrust on your body whenever you dive into a swimming pool the water gives upthrust over you right and that is why 
your overall weight reduces inside water. Similarly, when a soil is submerged inside a, a water body, say the river bed which is completely submerged inside the water, there is an upthrust on the solid particles, right? And the upthrust is equal to the volume of solid particles into the density of water. Okay, so we'll just say that upthrust is u. As you can see that the water uh, weight has to be acting downward. Solid weight is also acting downwards as they are under the influence of gravity. But upthrust is opposite to that of the gravity. Hence, it is taken as negative. So ms plus mw minus u upon the total volume that is bs plus bw. Ms plus mw as you know that is it is saturated mass we just saw previously right it is a saturated mass minus the upthrust so saturated mass minus the upthrust will give me submerged mass what is this upthrust now where upthrust is rho w into v so the upthrust is the total volume of your soil multiplied by the density of water because the the total volume of the soil would be displaced inside the water and whatever amount of volume has been displaced inside the water that multiplied by the density of water would be would give you the upthrust that is applied on the body okay so rho submerged is given as rho saturated minus rho w very important relation rho saturated minus rho w so this completes the first part of this series the next part i'll be uploading soon uh, hope you understood this much this was the basics of your three phase diagram and this you will be requiring in your next series as well so thank you so much for watching this series and hope you learned something valuable please like share and subscribe my channel for more such videos thank you